a bit of a blustery day and not ideal for painting on the spot, I've come west along the embankment to the Houses of Parliament, an icon of London. And look at the way it glows. The sun is just breaking through the cloud. I want to capture that glow, its reflection in the water. Don't want to get hooked up on the detail. So my sketches are going to be really about the outline and the shape and where the light falls that I can leave out almost all the information that the camera's going to give me and just keep it simple. I've brought my reference back to the studio and I've drawn a simple outline sketch on ash rough paper and now I'm just going to dampen the areas up against the lights so that the colour from the sky drifts up and brings out the lights from the side of the building. I'm not going to dampen it all over, just where I want the colour to come up against the sides where the light was just beginning to catch as the sun came out and also on the other side of the clouds as they're rolling along I just want a little bit of wetted paper so that I can keep them soft edged. And I'm going to use Prussian blue. I love Prussian blue. And use the heel of the brush over the top of the clouds bring this colour up against the lit sides take it away and across on the sides that are not lit it doesn't have to be so dark because we're not trying to bring out light against dark and it can come down over the roofs because the building was all effectively darker against the background of the sky. Sky is moving all the time so you don't again just look at the sky that's in your uh, photographs because the sky changes. If you were being, if you're painting outside, it wouldn't be just one pattern of sky. So don't be afraid to alter your sky. You're not locked into any of it. You are the painter. I'm putting a little bit of yellow ochre into the base of the sky because it was still quite sort of not gloomy is the wrong word, but the light wasn't high and it just helps take away the blueness. Don't want too bright blue sky day. Remembering to leave out a little bit of the white clouds. It's often a good idea to have two brushes ready loaded so that you can switch and swatch between your hands so you can run colour in quickly and catch those blends because that's what watercolour is so beautiful for isn't it all those lovely blends and now I'm going to bring that yellow ochre another of my favourite colours down over the rest of the building careful not to let it run into the sky where I don't want it to run and into the water to me, the House of Parliament just drift into the water and that golden colour can just be a lovely underwash in this water. Originally, I wasn't going to paint the barges in, but when I got back and looked at the photographs, I actually rather liked the way the light was catching the top of the roofs of those barges. And I decided that I would just hint at them here in the foreground. I didn't sketch them in the original sketch, I only sketched the shape of the building because I thought that was all I was going to paint. But once I saw the photograph, somehow they seemed to be more important than I think they felt when I was in front of the actual building. 
The water to me is a rich embodiment of the reflection of this building that glows when the sun begins to hit it. And raw umber is one of those colours that carries glow in it, in its dilute form, but it mixes beautifully to become a dark. So I'm going to run this in, while this is still wet, along the waterline and take it up under the bridge where they can be dark. And then using the side of the brush, just let it calm down into the actual water. I want to maintain its depth of colour near the houses apartment themselves. But it was soon broken up. The water was quite rough in this blustery day. And so it was soon broken up. So it's not like a mirror reflection, but it's enough of a reflection to give us the actual darkness of these towers in the water below. So I'm going to use that colour into this wet wash. All the dark lines of these buildings. And then while it's still wet, just take my brush across to blend them a bit so they're not too obviously edgy. And also the reflections of the boats. I'm going to pick up a little bit of cadmium red into my Prussian blue and just put those in at the same time, leaving the lights on the top of the boats. The more you can actually get in to a wet wash, the further on, in a sense, you are with your painting. It's often the nicest effects happen with the wet into wet. And you'll be surprised, you think a paint is going to take a long time, but if you've got a lot into wet and wet washes, it actually comes together much quicker. I can catch the reds on the underside of the boat while the wash is wet. And also the colour of the boat there. And all this is giving me time to let the top half of the painting dry so that I don't whiz in too soon with my spires. But I want to go in while it's still damp. I'm going to use a nice sable with a lovely tip. This is a size 10. And I'm going to re-wet the Houses of Parliament with yellow ochre. Effectively, I'm going to leave out the lightest parts. So that's on top of the wall. the embankment wall, the sides that are catching the light. Always use as big a brush as you can handle because the quicker, one reason, you, the quicker you get the paint on, but also it stops you being too finickety. And I want to keep this building simple. So the roofs of these were a dark blue against the uh, light of the sky, but for me they just drift into the colour of the ochre. So I'm going to run them in now, just leaving out the spires in between. I haven't counted the spires, probably aren't enough here, it doesn't matter, you're only doing an impression, a quick image of this magnificent building. I think that roof's steeper, isn't it? Yeah. 